Welcome to Wobbly Woman TV. My name's Lisa Barrick, and today we're doing an inspirational interview with the gorgeous Rachel Dunn <laughs> from Girl Director. Hey, Lisa, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. <laughs> I'm very excited about today. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so, Rachel's been in the film industry for over 30 years. She's one. Oh, really? Over okay, 20. so you're not as old as <laughs> <laughs> 25, actually. Okay. <laughs> Um, oh she God. has won, won amazing awards for her music videos and other things as well. And she's now helping other women change the world through video. Absolutely. <laughs> it's Thank pretty you. awesome. <laughs> her mission is to teach and empower women who are already masters at what they do and to make them more highly visible and teach them marketing um, through her online courses as well. Absolutely. So thanks for your time today, Rachel, and for sharing your story with our Wobbly Woman community. You're welcome, absolutely. It's all about getting messages out there to help more women. So, yeah. so Rachel, I really loved your book, Better Videos. Thank you. I loved your story. You know, I, I was a bit surprised by mm -hmm. your personal story, and that's mm -hmm. really what I want to share with mm -hmm. people today. You had lots of great tips on how to make videos and how to market your videos. But let's, let's talk a little bit about the woman behind Girl Director. Mm, okay. Oh, the woman. What, what surprised you about the, the book? It was very personal. Yeah. You know, I think you shared things that I had no idea about and things mm. that um, challenges. Mm. You know, I see you as a very successful person and often we don't think about um, the challenges that have led you to become the you know, successful mm. person you are. So that made me think, wow, if she's been through all that, Okay, maybe I can too. <laughs> well, everyone has their challenges, you yeah. know, and everyone has different interpretations. And I guess that's what it's about is to, those challenges help you to be the person that you are. That's you know? right. Well, I, talking about that, I love the quote that you have in the book. So this quote <laughs> says, life is like a camera. Focus on what's important. Capture the good times. Develop from the negatives. And if things don't work out, take another shot. Absolutely. And I wish I could have said that I wrote that quote, but you know, when I saw it, I just thought it is so good because it is, it's about focusing on what's important and then, you yeah. know, take another shot. Well, it's sort of like a metaphor for your life. It's a really mm. great metaphor. So I'd like to know what inspired you to get into video making? You know, how did you know that that was your passion? You know, it was really weird and every time I think about that moment where I wanted to do video, it was really, I was 15, I was sitting on my teenage bedroom floor, you know, listening to a, a music on the tape do. recorder, on the <laughs> tape deck, you know, the tape deck. That's showing you right. <laughs> And I remember, you know, with school, they give you a big list of things that you could do. But I found this other list, of course, of things that you could do in the creative field when you left school. And I saw the word cinematographer and I just thought, wonder, you know, what is cinematographer? That's a giant word. And I didn't know what that meant. So I looked it up mm. and then I learned because I, I just had this, I don't know, that as well as just I worked in a record store with my dad. So, you Were know, you already studying film at school at, no, by that stage? No, no, oh. not at all. So because my dad has a, had a record store growing up and I guess from quite a young age, I was working in that record store. So mm. Influenced it, by know, music and exactly. the whole scene. And, you know. and I just thought, you know, I love being around bands and music and dad would get me to do the, the shop displays oh. and the windows. So I was very visual. Yeah. And so and because dad as a musician, I thought, well, I'll practice on him first. So, you know, dad ended up being my assignments and my music first <laughs> music video and my, yeah. you know, so that's where it all started was okay. just from the music store and just, just, yeah. And that you had me. that creative flair in mm. you as well and, and inspired by. The thing though yeah. was that everyone used to laugh at me because it was like, okay, you live in Mount Gambier, which is a country town in South Australia. How are you going to be a music video director with no opportunities, no studying media, no directors that live there. So what did was, you think about that? Did you think that was a setback or no, a challenge right from the start? I just didn't care what anyone thought. Yeah. It was all about being different for me. It was about being a bit of a rebel. Yeah. <laughs> and it, you know what? That's good that no one likes it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And I loved um, in your book, you also say like there was only three of you doing um, media studies mm. at the time. And look at the changes oh. in in the last 20 years. Or That's so. amazing. I think mm. I studied in year 12, we moved to Adelaide and I studied um, subliminal advertising because that was fascinating. Because again, that was something that was illegal 
And I thought, that's um, <laughs> our cat banging in the yeah, background. Yeah, he's joining in. Yeah. <laughs> um, but subliminal advertising was fascinating mm. because one, it was illegal. Two, it was just about how you can um, impress upon the subconscious mind through imagery and um, how powerful that was. So I studied it when, you know, back in year 12. So oh, wow, that's... Mm quite a deep thing for a young person to you know get it but I, I love that that sort of set the tone for a lot of mm. the work that you do now around mindset yep. and and all that so absolutely you describe yourself as an introvert but I love how you got your first job <laughs> can you just can you share with the readers how you got your first well, job it's funny you know um when I, because I was doing media, a media course, mm -hmm. and they sent us out to do some work experience or uh, opportunities, and I was sitting in um, Channel 10 in Adelaide in the front, and I thought, right, okay, I'm go I was waiting for somebody to do a tour. And at the security desk, I just, there was this crazy, you know, little guy with dreadlocks, and he was like, you know what, I, I need somebody who was talking to the security guard, and he's like, I need somebody to do animation for this show. And so I, you were eavesdropping on, on a conversation. Was, <laughs> it was a security, so they were right in front of me. And I just thought, something within me, it, it's really hard to explain, but something within me just went, speak now. Just, you know, what have you got to lose? And I just said, hey, I'll do it. And, you know, who am I? I don't even know animation. I didn't even know oh my God. anything. And oh. they're like, okay, well, and then I called him that night and he taught me some stuff and then he left for Japan what? and I was doing it. And you, that's how you got your yep. first job. That's right. Doing animation for Molly like, Grubbs. <laughs> that blows me away because that's all about... Were you shaking in your boots? Were you... I was like absolutely shaking. And I just thought... But not, not, it did not occur to me that I couldn't do it. It was just that whole, this is your opportunity. This is it. Go for it. You, you knew your path. I know I wanted to work from the ground up working in television to yeah. learn all the things to make video. Yeah. So, do you know, I yeah. think that's so inspiring because how many of us have been in situations where if we just said something, if we mm -hmm. just made that first move, what, what, could, what could have been? What could have been, you know? But yeah. that's really inspiring that, Thank you. that you did that. I and can't believe it either now. I just think, I don't know if I'd do that now. Well, maybe I would. But you know what? That leads on to this idea you've got that all mm. it takes is, what was it? 20, 20 seconds. 20 seconds of courage can change your life. Do you want to explain that and how that's impacted your life? I think Michael and I were watching a movie one night. I can't remember. I think it was the, the family that bought a zoo or something. We okay. like animal yeah, movies. Yeah. <laughs> I love animals. <laughs> And um, I just remember that statement just really got to me. And I just thought, you know what? It's so true. So after watching that movie, I just thought that is now my new thing. Like that a mantra for life. It is. Yeah. If I have 20 seconds of courage right now, what's that going to give me? Yeah. And if you have 20 seconds, you can do a lot in that time. Yeah. You can make that phone call. Because yeah. it's just that know, split second decision, isn't it? It is. You know, it that is. can change your That's awesome. Mm. I love that. I have a mantra, one thing a day to try and help me get things done. But I like the 20 seconds of courage because sometimes you need courage to get things done. Well, so. if you have that extra <laughs> bit of courage too, it's like, because everyone can stretch and everyone has things, okay, that maybe they're putting off. But if they go, right, I'm going to put the clock on. I'm going to give myself 20 seconds to do something mm. courageous. I definitely try it. Yeah. You'll be really pleasantly, you'll be excited about how, how quickly you can grow with That's that. That's great. I love your journey and I love your story in the book because, you know, you share, you share how you started working at the bottom Mm -hmm. you know, bottom of the industry and you called it the dungeon and I'd love <laughs> you to tell us a little bit about that. But I guess the main thing is, you know, you worked a lot of shitty jobs to get, mm -hmm. get to where you are now. Mm. It, is that important for a creative? Do we have to start at the bottom, you know, to succeed? Or what is the benefit of working in those shitty jobs? You know, I don't know... Again, it's about mindset. And at that time, I thought that's what I had to do was work mm. from the bottom to learn the skills I needed to grow. Mm. Um, but in saying that, if you're confident and you know what you're doing, then you don't have to start at the bottom. Yeah. But you do have to learn life skills. And I do believe you have to learn life skills. And you're learning to work with people, learning to work with a team, learning um, just about how other people work so that you can yeah. um, contribute to them. Yeah, so it was the, you know, you learnt a lot of technical things, mm -hmm. I guess, as well, as well Absolutely. as the whole people side of it. Yeah. It's, it's interesting because um, the Hay House CEO, Reed Tracy, I had a, 
um, day listening to him teach mm -hmm. one and he said in my opinion it takes 10 years to become an overnight success mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. that reminds me of that yeah you know, yeah like, absolutely well we've got clients too that um say to me oh you know it took me 30 years to be an overnight success and it's so true yeah. it's um you know every every person has their journey but i do believe it takes time to also have the confidence or know in your heart what is the right where is the right direction for you and that can sometimes take a while it might chop and change for a while you yeah. know everyone's got their different path but I because do Rachel, it time. I actually have a lot of people say to me when we talk about you know passion live your passion and purpose mm -hmm. some people say well I don't know I don't know what my passion is you know what would you say to those people like you knew with the word cinematographer yeah. you know I've always known I wanted to write but what do you say to people who don't know what their passion is? They might be stuck in jobs they don't like or whatever. What, how can you inspire them to find their passion or purpose? I sometimes think that we, especially with when life happens, that you, you bottled up what you were passionate about as a mm. child. And I think um, because we're so busy today, we're busy with stuff on all the time, yeah. things in our face, but if you go back to when you're a child and mm. you think about what you really loved as a child and think about what really made you happy, yeah. you know? And I think about being a kid, I was always a behind the scenes kind of person and I also loved animals. So yeah. the animal side for me was actually hidden for a long time and I even forgot about that part of me, but it wasn't until I did some personal development and I also just, quieten my voice yeah. and quieten everything around me to stop and actually ask myself, what's it going to take for an idea to show up that I can, you know, do, make the difference I want to make or change animals' lives? Or So yeah. I kept asking that one question and you'll find that if you really listen, that one thing will pop into your mind. Yeah, I think that's really good advice. Yeah. You talk about some really big challenges that you were faced with, uh, you know, in your early jobs and... You know, what were some of those challenges mm -hmm. that you faced? Are you happy to share yeah, some of Yeah, absolutely. I think for me, it was confidence. I really struggled with self-belief. It's a big one, isn't it? <laughs> it was huge. And in turn, not having confidence in myself, then I attracted a lot of things, whether it be, um, you know, some bullying or, you know, a lot of... Um, a lot of people that put me down and just is that in know. the industry like you mentioned it was a very much a boys club like mm -hmm. were you one of the first women you know directors at that time were there I many wasn't, there wasn't many yeah. i wasn't the first there was yeah. definitely when you look there's some in the 19 you know 20s yeah, yeah, but sure. <laughs> <laughs> but um definitely i was one of the few and that's where the girl director brand came from because i thought as a freelancer and and it wasn't a boys club. I mean, I love working with guys yeah. and I don't like saying okay. it's a boys club, but I felt, you know, whatever I attracted at that time, I was surrounded by mostly men and most of them were fine, but I found that it was quite isolating and I didn't really have any, anyone to connect with or to talk to. I would have loved a mentor or somebody to share with. Yeah. And um, I just, yeah, because I related very differently. I had different emotions and... So it was just tough. I found it tough. And yeah. um, so Girl Director was born purely so that when I was out there freelancing as a director, I thought, well, how can I stand out in a male dominated you know, space? Yeah. How can I you know, have fun with this and create a character that's me hiding behind something? That's right. So out of what so, could have been or perceived as a challenge that it mm. was possibly a male dominated industry, mm -hmm that awesome brand mm. came through i love it and i love yep. the 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 power behind it you know it's like when i listen to the sound the, the clip mm -hmm. you're advertising the clip for the girl director i just oh, i can't help but get mm. up and want to move and awesome. dance. <laughs> and that's what it's about the yeah. power behind it is not about against men it's not about yeah, anything it's just sure. about let's just you can do this and you know a lot of women struggle with technology and we teach a lot of women that and we find that more and more women are embracing video and yeah. I think there still needs to be more women out there that are embracing video production because they have a different slant on it and um, we've got clients that have built their business with video and it's amazing like they're yeah. out there just doing stuff and yeah. directing and creating and yeah, but that's your so mission isn't it so I want to get onto mm. that because before you actually 
um, made girl director, you were made, that was another challenge. You were made redundant mm. in your job. And I love this thing that you said in your, well, I don't love it, but it, it, it sort of <sighs> stuck in my head is that when you lost your job, you felt like you lost your identity. Mm. And I think that's an important mm. thing to sort of raise because I think we, you know, what did that mean for you? And, you know, mm. how did you overcome that? I mean, it was a very, t it was amazing. It was a tough time um, because there was lots of rumours going around that there was going to be some job losses in television. And, you know, I just didn't believe that that was possible. I just was <laughs> naive. You loved a job. You were enjoying yeah, a job. Absolutely. And, yeah. and, you know, I did stuff on the side and I did this. And yeah. But when the day came when they gave me the envelope, I'm just like, no, I've made my decision. I'm not going. And they're like, I'm sorry, but, you know, there is no choice. <laughs> I'm like, and I was just shocked, you know. I was just, no, I'm sorry, but, you know, the rumours were that no, we could no, make a choice. No, that's not for me. <laughs> and they're like, uh, no, I'm sorry. That's, oh, you know. No. So I was in complete, you know, denial. That and must I, have been devastating. I just, yeah, I just felt extremely lost for a long time. But it was the best thing that ever happened to me. Because that's when Girl Director was born. Yeah, exactly. That's how, yeah. yeah. But I also think that, in my mind, I think that's what I wanted because I've always, you know, working in TV, I always saw doing bigger things. Yeah. And so, you know, I just, I think it was a blessing in disguise and yeah. they helped push me into the direction that I needed to go. Yeah. So. I love that. You know, the old one door <laughs> shuts, another one opens. Absolutely. You know? <laughs> and I wouldn't be here now doing what I'm doing if it wasn't for that. It is a big step, like when I think of the women in my community and, and for myself as well, you know, how do you live? Like I know you and Michael were a, a part or are a partner, a partnership and, you know, how do you know when to make the change of I'm just going to go for mm -hmm. my dreams? You know, do you, did you have, you know, savings lined up? Did you put things in place so that you, I know you were made mm -hmm. redundant, but when I did you really? I procrastinated a lot. Did you? <laughs> when I first got made redundant, I worked from home and I just sit there and the self doubt and the sabotage and I just. And then I moved into an office thinking that was going to change it. Yeah. <laughs> and then I was scared of answering the phone. Oh, yeah. And I was, I'd even pull it out when it would ring. I, I have that problem. <laughs> do you? <laughs> yeah, I actually do. Ask um, my family and friends, Lisa, pick up the phone. <laughs> yeah. And I had a real phobia around yeah. the phone and also just being in communication with people. I didn't have any business skills. And then I went and rented a space at a film studio mm. and I had, um, you know, shared the space with another group and I just... It just, um, I had no idea what I was See, doing. See, Rachel, this is interesting to me because as a creative, whether you're a filmmaker, you know, um, writer, artist, we have our, you know, our passion and our what we do, but how do you take it to the business level? Like, that's oh. the thing, you know, I want to write books and I, I have no idea about marketing and that's why I <laughs> contacted you. <laughs> but, um, yep. you know, that's the thing, isn't it? it mm. Do you think that holds a lot of people back? I think so. Fear is a big thing. Yeah. Um, I've always just gone for it. I've always had this mindset that, you know what, I just, I'm determined, I have passion, I'm willing, and they're really valuable traits when you're on your own. You, you've got to have determination. You have to have passion. Yeah. And you have to believe that at the end of the day, you know you'll get there. Yeah. So yeah. for me, I went in blindly because of the redundancy, but yeah. I found, you know, again, I, I worked myself to the bone until the point where I did have a meltdown. Well, I want to talk about this. You have, if it's okay mm, with you, you had um, like a physical challenge and mm. um, what is it? Narco Narcolepsy. Narcolepsy. Yeah. What is that and how did that affect <laughs> you? Like I've never heard of it before. It's Rachel. interesting. It's actually called c cataplexia and okay. it's, it's a part of narcolepsy, which is for those of you who don't know what narcolepsy is, it's a sleeping disorder where you just, you know, collapse. Like did you sleep. literally just sometimes just... Well, Michael and I were on a date, actually, on Valentine's Day, and, and my um, narcolepsy was triggered by laughing. So oh it was a really debilitating thing when it first happened. We're on a date, we're laughing, we had a few drinks, and I collapsed. And I just, I was scared. I thought I was having a stroke, and I couldn't oh move. And then, you know, I went and had, went to the doctors, went and had tests, went and, um, and it was just they found that, yeah, I was going into deep sleep within two minutes when normally it takes somebody 15 to 20 minutes to go into deep sleep. Wow. So 
I would go into deep sleep in two minutes and when I laughed or had shock or a severe, like a full on emotion, my body would go into that REM and so my left side would, would collapse. So I was on medication for a long time to keep me awake because I'd want to sleep all the time. But it's not as bad as a lot of people. A lot of people struggle with, you know, just falling asleep at the drop of a hat, yeah. whereas mine is triggered by emotion. Yeah. So I've had to really dull down my laughing for the last, you know, 10 years or something. That, that is <laughs> I can laugh like this because it's controlled, but, you know. That is really, sh like, shocking mm. to me. Mm. But I guess when you're used to it, but yeah. it is. Dulling yeah. down your emotions, they, you know, laughing's meant to be the best medicine. Yeah. But, um, but are you still happy? Like, yeah, absolutely. Like you can still feel happiness yeah. and all that, but it's Good just question. that laughter. Mm. And I, I find I can cry, but yeah. it's sometimes that's releasing the emotion probably that's trapped. Right. So, yeah. Did it impact your business? Um, yeah, especially the medication because right. I was put on dexamphetamine for a long time and antidepressants right. and that, um, that was like having speed for a long time. So I'd work harder, I would work longer, I was detached from people, I couldn't connect because I was just on this, you know, high all the time. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, I can get more done, but I wasn't <laughs> focused, you know. But then it got to the point where I had a burnout, you know. only You can only do that for so long before you... I never forget that Requiem for a Dream movie. Oh. Have you ever seen that? No, I don't think I've heard of it, but I haven't seen it. I was heard. like the lady that just cleaned her house constantly oh and just from, you know, taking whatever to just... Anyway, but I have not been on any medication now for seven, no, no, about four years, actually. That's four amazing. Years, and never felt better. That's so. wonderful. I'm glad to hear that. Mm. That's, um, is it widely spread? Like, or, you know, do you know of many other people who no. suffer with it? No, no I don't. Okay. There's, a lot of, um, there's a lot of people that are depressed. There's a lot of user groups, but there's a lot of people that are in that victim kind of like okay. you know this is not so really it was yeah. a holistic thing for you you were actually starting to work on you know personal development and yep. doing what you love so it was a kind of a holistic approach to your yeah. healing as and well. I also believe that you know we have things that are trapped emotion or we have things that are there who knows why but they are caused from other things so yeah. it may be labeled that but I didn't believe that that was the case okay so that's you great. Know. So mm. you said something really interesting. Mm. You said um, you had a bit of a meltdown and you took some time out. So you mm. gave yourself some space. What did you do there and how? <laughs> yeah, tell, yeah, tell us okay. about that time. Well, I had, yeah, the meltdown was pretty horrible. Um, I think when you're in that space, you just attract more and more bad things. And mm. it was pretty terrible. And I won't mm. go into it, yeah. but it was just, yeah, I had a meltdown. But you gave yourself time. That's the most, yeah. or space to... I stopped doing the business. Yeah. I completely shut it down. And I just thought, oh my God, I don't want to do video again. I've lost that. I've lost my passion. And I, it, it was an ego-driven industry. And I lost my passion for making it. I wanted to make a difference. And mm -hmm. it was just money driven ego driven and just i couldn't so you find felt my disheartened way. by yeah. the whole thing at the time yeah. absolutely so mm. i um yeah i took some time i stayed with my family it was also when i'm the, the medication i was looking at getting off the medication yeah. so it was a lot of things going on mm. and so yeah and then i know i i just kept asking what can i do what what and that's what i was saying earlier what can i do to make a difference in the world um, using video to make and I kept asking that question and I found then my passion for animals yeah and I love what you, you said know, in the book though it was like you're having a shower and you ran out of the shower <laughs> Michael 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 oh, I got this idea like, <laughs> that's exactly how it happened and um, see that's like, inspired thought Rachel <laughs> that is asking the universe yeah isn't it, is. it and you got an answer I did you know? and in the shower is when I get a lot of my answers <laughs> I don't know about you, but I get a lot Something of about the being shower. nude, maybe. <laughs> well, apparently, Free. The receptors on the crown or the water okay. or something. Okay. Yeah. So, do tell you get us do you get your ideas in the shower? No, I get them when I'm driving. Oh, yeah, driving's good. Too. It's weird. I don't know why. That's good. And do you have a you know recorder on? No, but. I won't go into my little thing, but I had an okay. idea for a book and, and I got home and I'm like, kids, I'm not cooking dinner. And I was writing sideways on a notepad, my idea, and then shut my door and my whole book idea is sideways wow. on a notepad. Fantastic. So <laughs> just from driving. You've got to get that out, you know, you yeah. drive more. But tell us about your inspired idea. I love okay. it. I, um, 
Um, so my idea, and this is going to sound a bit crazy, was that I saw an elephant in my mind taking a, a photograph and I, I saw um, an elephant in my mind and, and just a little backstory, I started learning animal communication because we're working on another project and I found out that you can actually communicate with animals. So yeah. when I found that out, I'm like, oh my God, I have to learn everything. I wow. want to know how to do it. And this is just spoke, spoken to me. So anyway, I had this idea or this vision about an elephant taking a, um, a photo with a camera and that's my image. And I went out to Michael and I said, and mind you, some people love an elephants. I have no affiliation really? with really? elephants. So uh, an elephant just popped in your yep. mind? I knew nothing about oh them. My. Then You know how some people love certain animals yeah. and collect them? That's yeah. not me with elephants wow. at all. So it came from nowhere, out of the blue. And I came out and I said to Michael, I've just had the weirdest idea. I just, what if, what if there's an elephant trying to communicate to me somewhere in the world and wants to take pictures? And, and he's like... What did he say? Um, <laughs> Wow. <laughs> but, you know, he's always so supportive. Yeah. And he just went, that's really interesting. Why don't you follow it? And I'm like, oh, my God, where would I start? Where would this elephant be? How do I know where it is? What country is it in? And anyway, I just started to go, this one idea drove me to pack my bags within a couple of months and head off to Thailand oh to try and find this elephant. Oh, my God. <laughs> so I did. I went off and I'm just like, right, that's it. Had some freelance work and just went, you know what? I'm going away getting off my medication and I'm going to find this elephant. I love that. <laughs> I love that so, story. And, it's pretty out there. And <laughs> did you want to talk about what has evolved since yeah, that? You've sure. got a, a documentary coming yeah. out? Or so Through did Elephant you want to Eyes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. So yeah. Through Elephant Eyes. Um, okay. It went with one mission and then it was a bigger, bigger mission as I worked out that the, actually the first elephant that I met um, Peter, he actually had just finished filming a Samsung ad using a phone and taking photos. So, <laughs> I mean, that's, and I went all around Thailand and everywhere else trying to find an yeah. elephant because I second guessed, I doubted that that was the one. Yeah. And I was just, Peter the one, do you think? Did I you believe, find the one? I believe that it was a bigger message. Maybe that yeah. was my bait. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and maybe I saw an image of him doing that. I don't know, but. No yeah. other elephants did that that I have ever seen. That's so, wonderful. Well, I can't know, wait to see this documentary because it's special. while it's, you know, it seems to be about the elephant, it seems to be about so much more as well, doesn't it's it? It's very so, deep and yeah. the elephants have a message for everybody and okay. that's where what this what is what the doco is about. Wow, that's, that's amazing. So did that story and that calling from the elephant change your life? Like what mm. brought you out of possibly that depression that you were in and what did you do then? How did you move forward? That's a good question. I, I came back, you know, actually when I was over there, because I had a real camera fear. I had a really you. massive camera fear. <laughs> I find yeah. that hard to believe. You're a girl, girl director. Like, well, but you were behind, no, the, behind camera, the camera, I suppose. Yeah. yeah. And because I, I, I directed so many celebrities in front of the camera that when it came for me to be in front, I was so... Um, hard on myself, how I looked, yeah. and so when and I thought I'm doing a doco, how am I going to be in front of the camera? And I tried to find help and support. And there was just nothing available then to help me to be able to be alright on camera. So I thought, right, I'll be fine. I'll just do it. And then I got to Thailand, and every time I'd set the camera up, I would just freeze, and I would just make weird faces. <laughs> and I, I don't know if you experienced this before. Yes, <laughs> a lot. <laughs> And it was just I'd go like, oh my God, I just couldn't speak. And it was just, I was frozen. And so what I realized when I was over there was there was a lot of stories I got told that were huge in documentaries, you know, stories that have never been told. And yeah. I thought, you know what, I, cannot I can't tell these all myself. I need to be able to, and I'm sure that if I'm out there and I can actually help other women to... I'm out here with one camera, one thing, and I can create a story. Yeah. Imagine how, if other women can be able to be confident on camera and be able to share from the heart yeah. these kind of stories, the world needs it. Rachel, I love that because you've often said that there are so many amazing people out there, you know, men and mm. women who've got amazing stories, but they are hidden. They're stuck mm. in whatever ways. So is this what inspired you to um, create more of the teaching, mentoring side mm. of your business? So Absolutely. you also do the filming and the directing and all that, but you've got this other side to mm. your business now. 
Well, we we really are tapped into people that are masters at what they do. Right. They've been doing what they do for a long time, but mm -hmm. again, they they haven't been confident on camera. Yeah, they have no idea how to get their message out there. They're good yeah. at what they do, but yeah. they're invisible. So, so all your mindset stuff and all the stuff mm. you've been through and all that, that is actually a big part of what you do, isn't it? Like I, I know from working <laughs> with you, it's more than just the technical side of learning how mm. to use video and that. It's actually... It's huge. It's the confidence, isn't it? It's the mindset and the confidence yeah. that without that, you but don't without really... without mission too. Without yeah. what are you here to okay. do? What are you here to say? Mm. And when you're not clear, you're mm. not focused, you are chasing the next biggest thing, you... Yeah. Yeah, you know, going. I see this on Facebook all the time where people are just jumping from this thing to that thing and I'm an expert at this now and it's like, just stick to your message. What are you here to do? Yeah. And the rest will unfold, the income, the confidence, and then whatever platform that that happens on will yeah. just help support that. Yeah, that's so. really good advice. So why do you think, you know, women are so technophobic? Like, <laughs> why? <laughs> why are we so... Well, I think that they, they tell themselves they are. Mm. You know, it all starts with, I know for myself, when I was going through that stressful period, I would, I remember the first Mac that I had at home after redundancy. <laughs> I love this story. And it was just, it would sound like a jumbo jet when it was like trying to render something out. And I'm just like, oh my God. Didn't it explode? Like well, didn't another yeah, one explode? That was another story. But yes, one did explode in a, an office where I was extremely stressed and I was, I did not want to be at this place. And oh. right next to me. Talk about energy, yeah, creating energy. It actually exploded and this computer was off. So, and they're like, we have this computers. And, I'm, yeah. and I actually was quite happy about it. Yeah. <laughs> Did so not want to be there. This affirming, <laughs> these affirmations, changing your thoughts around, yeah. you know, I, and I and love that was, little affirmation you say. What do you say that, um, you know? Which one? I, I think there's a lot, I know, but um, um, I am good with technology or yeah. technology is easy to use or something like technology that. Technology is easy. I'm great with technology, even if you're not yet you'll find ways to be able to do the things you want to do. Yeah. And you don't have to be good at it all. You just have to stop telling yourself you're bad at it because technology is an extension of you. It's energy, it's power, and it enables you to share your message. I love that. So I love that. So video is, they talk about video as being, you know, the revolution in marketing, <laughs> you know? Like I know that it's, it's been around for a while now, but it's awesome for you because that's your passion, you yeah. know? What is it that makes video so powerful for women, uh, for people wanting to share their message out there? Well, a few things. One, connection. Mm. And you, you see pretty quickly whether you connect with somebody or not. Okay. And with PDFs and other things, yeah. you just, you don't get a real sense. So it's the real you coming across. Yeah. You're being authentic. Well, you're... <laughs> providing you feel good because okay. confidence is everything. And when you're on camera, you know, when somebody's awkward, you can just tell, yeah. you know, and... Yeah. I Look, just, I feel like know. that sometimes too. My daughter says, Mum, whenever you go on video, you, you sound like you screech, like, hi, hi, and I'm like, oh, that, you know, mm. <laughs> it's because I'm nervous. But also you have to generate yourself too, you yeah. know, and by switching yourself up a couple of levels yeah. just because you can seem really monotone yeah. and then people switch off. So you do have to be aware of people listening and put some excitement in your voice yeah. or, you know. <laughs> just, just ramp it up a little bit. Ramp, ramp it up a little bit. <laughs> but it depends on your personality too. Yeah. So, but video is powerful in so many ways and the way it's going, um, you'll be able to create documentaries on your phone and you already can. You'll be able to create feature films and then it'll be the interactive side. So it'll be the, um, you know, share. It, it'll just be so automatic. So I believe, and this is an out there thought, that videos helping people to actually build stories in their mind so that eventually when we are thinking mind to mind telepathic yeah. communication yeah. Yeah. that we'll be able to send complete thoughts to somebody else wow and videos that's... teaching us that wow rachel that is that is a big thought that is it a is. big way of thinking i mean who knows that's it? just a thought <laughs> no it's um i kind of get that sometimes i have feelings or mm. i thinking I know how other people might. Well, if I say to you right now, you know, go into your kitchen and, you know, have mm. a look at your sink. Is there any dishes on the sink? Yeah, I see it as a picture in my and, mind. And exactly, and that's a movie and that's, we think in pictures. Wow. So being able to actually, and when you're creating videos, you're creating something from your mind. And yeah. that's what I loved about music videos. You'd create something from your mind and there's nothing better than being on set and going, 
oh my God, everybody's here to create my vision that's out of my head. There is nothing more cool And the feeling that that you get at the end when they're actually happy with what the creation that you've all been a part of. You hope they're happy. Yeah. (laughs) A couple of times, uh, you know, they're like, what is this? No. And I love what you say, Rachel, is that, you know, to start with, you don't need Mm. massive, expensive equipment. You can Mm. start simply with your phone and all that. Absolutely. What's good about your book is that you really do share a lot of amazing information, Mm. you know. Do you want to share with the um, community some of the um, offerings Mm -hmm. that that you have? Well, if, if anybody wants to check out what we do, we've actually got lots of free things. We've got free camera confidence training, and that's a really good introduction to us as well, how we work. Yeah. Um, but we work, uh, we've got a mastermind called The Ripple Effect, yeah, and nice. we're all about creating change and yes. about creating that ripple because video is about creating a ripple. You'd never know, like you don't know where this video is gonna go, yeah. who's gonna see it, yeah. whose lives are gonna be affected by it. So, um, and yeah, we, we have a monthly mastermind. So, you know, just contact me and I can, I can yeah, see if yeah. you're interested. You know what I loved when I contacted you? What? I felt like you were excited about my passion and vision, mm. you know, and you were selective about, you know, who you chose and who you chose to work with and, and am I really... Um, passionate and you know mm. about what I want to do you know? absolutely like, and that's important I yeah. want to see your vision yeah because if I don't I've got no business in helping you if I can't see the vision do you yeah. know in my yeah. mind because yeah. I believe holding space for clients like I see all of our clients I'm excited about every single one of them where they're going what they're doing yeah. and I can see a bigger picture for them and holding that for them is really and it important. must be frustrating sometimes because I know as your <laughs> client you know it's like you and you're a good mentor because it's you keep me accountable and mm-hmm. you keep people accountable and that's what it's all about as well mm. so you know, it must be frustrating sometimes it's like come on Lisa you can do it or <laughs> but you know what everyone has their journey and yeah. you just got to be there you just say okay well what's going yeah. on and well, the you support's know, there. That's the main thing, absolutely. isn't it? That you and Michael both have mm. been wonderful. Thank and you. I see it uh, uh, in your community as well. So having said that, it's like video is the perfect vehicle for people to get their message out into the world. So Rachel, thank you for sharing your story with us here today. I'm really inspired by you and Michael and the thank work you. that you're doing. Thank you for having me. You're and, welcome. Uh, I hope that it inspires you if you're you know, looking for something that you want to do or you're passionate about do some of those things because it really will help well i think you are making a difference in the world and i think you know you've certainly made a difference in my life and i just want to thank you for what you're doing (laughs) thank you thank you thanks for having me you're welcome thanks for watching wobbly woman tv Bye. bye